Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to 17.3, which is entitled Ray Tracing. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is figuring out when we've got a curved mirror. I've got an example over here. We have uh, either a concave or a convex mirror. How do you know what the image is going to look like? Is there a way to predict, am I going to see myself larger and right side up, or am I going to see myself smaller and upside down? Maybe you've seen something when you looked in a spoon. Like you look at the outside of the spoon, you look like this. When you look at the inside of the spoon, you look like that. Maybe you've seen some large mirrors. Maybe you see mirrors outside to see around corners, or even the mirrors in your cars for that instance. Is there a way to predict what I will see when I look into a curved mirror. Because when we look into a flat mirror, we know that you're going to see the person the same size, right side up every time. But curved mirrors are a little bit different. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do with curved mirrors is define a few terms. Uh, the first term is a concave mirror. And that is a mirror that's shaped like the inside of a sphere. And a convex mirror is going to be the exact opposite. It's going to be shaped like the outside of a sphere. The principal axis. The principal axis is this line right here that runs along a mirror. It's a line that runs to the center of the mirror. The center of curvature. The center of curvature is if you were to have a big compass and you were to draw a circle, the center of curvature would be where the center of the circle of the mirror would be. Uh, the focal point. The focal point is going to be the spot where if you've got rays that are coming in parallel, they reflect through the focus. Uh, it turns out that the focal point is always half the center of curvature. Or the center of curvature is double the focus. And lastly, the principal plane. The principal plane is this line right here. It's a line perpendicular to the principal axis th through the intersection of the mirror. So it goes through the mirror right there. Now, uh, there's something with concave and convex mirrors. When you have a concave mirror, there's a type of defect, and it's called uh, spherical aberration. If you've got a mirror that's a perfect sphere, it turns out all the rays that, that go into this, they don't all go reflecting through the same point. If it's a parabola, though, a parabolic mirror, all the incoming rays, in this case, end up reflecting through that focal point. It makes for clearer images. Uh, convex mirrors, on the other hand, convex mirrors are kind of like concave mirrors because if convex mirrors, you've got a light ray coming in, rather than being bounced towards the center, what ends up happening is it goes away from the center, or actually away from the focal length, the focal point. So this focal point here, you'll notice these rays all emanate away from the focal point. It's almost making like a sun, the rays emanating away. Now, there's another reason that this, this focal point is negative. It's virtual. It's not. Re it's behind the mirror. So when we get into the math portion of this, the focal length for a concave mirror or convex mirror is negative, and the focal length for a concave mirror, that focal length is positive. Now we're going to get into finding exactly. Once we have these terms down, uh, we're going to figure out how do we figure out what our image is going to look like. And we do this through a process called ray tracing. Now, ray tracing works like this. It's a, it's a graphical method to figure out where the image is located. And I've got a set of steps right here that we're going to go through. Step one, draw the principal axis and the principal plane. Step two, draw ray one from the top of the object 
And so I'll, I'll take you through these. So let's start with an example. So step one, if the principal axis and the principal plane aren't already drawn for you, you have to draw those in. Step two, what you're going to do is you have to use a straight edge. Now, I think that I can just choose this here. Draw ray one from the top of your object to the principal plane. You don't stop at the mirror. You go all the way through the mirror to the principal plane. It reflects off that mirror through the focal point. That's step number one. Draw ray one from the top of the object, stop at the principal plane, reflect it through the focus. Now if it's convex, so you're going to see that it reflects away from, and we'll get to that in a second. Step four, draw ray two from the top of the object to the intersection of the principal plane and the principal axis. The next thing that you're going to do is you do a little bit of clever measuring. We need this angle right here to equal this angle of reflection. So what I'm going to do is just take my ruler and I'm going to measure the height of my object. And then I'm going to take my ruler and measure down here the same distance. And I'll put a little dot there. And then when we reflect off it, it's going to go through that dot like so. So that's step five. Reflect off the mirror on the other side of the principal axis with the same angle of incidence. Now, the reflected A's are going to either cross, they're going to be parallel, or they're going to be divergent. In this first example, these things cross, and they cross right there. That's where the top of my image is going to be formed. So here's my image. This image is upside down, so we call that inverted. Since it's inverted, that means that the height of my image is going to be negative. It's also um, real. This is a real image. It's a real image because the rays actually cross. These reflected rays here actually cross. So that means that the distance to my image is going to be positive, And it's smaller. So there's a couple of things. Uh, and one more thing that the focal length of this, the focal length of this, because it's concave, is going to be positive. So that's how you do this. So if I were to look in a mirror, if I would put myself right here, and I looked in, I would see myself smaller and upside down. Let's do another one. So ray 1 goes in, bounces through the focus. Ray 2 comes here. I measure it down at the same angle. And you're going to see that my, op, my image is located right here. When I stand on the center of curvature, I get an image that's the exact same size as the object. The height of my image, again, is going to be negative. The distance to my image is going to be positive, because it's a real image. And the focal length is going to be positive because it's concave on this next one. Ray 1 here. Ray 2 goes through the focus. Ray 2 goes here. And then it's going to, let's see. I may have to measure this one. Let's see. Well, I'm just going to have to go, I'm going to wing it. So this one's going to come down here. So it ends up crossing someplace right there. So here I get a larger image. And when I'm on the focal length, this goes here, it bounces off the focus. The second one hits here, and it's going to bounce off at the same angle. Here I've got no image. There's no image here when you're standing on a focal length. Maybe you noticed when you look inside a concave mirror that you get a, a very blurry image when you're right there.
And this is going to be my last example. I actually did uh, this one already, so I'm just going to get rid of it. My last example that I'm going to give for you guys, right here, goes in parallel, bounces through the focus. This one hits here, bounces off at the same. Now, you'll notice in all the other cases, my rays actually crossed, except for right here. Here they were parallel, and then, but this case, these are diverging. So what I'm going to have to do is trace these rays backwards. And if you ever trace a ray backwards, you have to use a dotted line. So my image is going to be located right here. It's an enlarged upright image. So in this case, the distance to my image is going to be negative because it's virtual. The height of my image is going to be positive because it's upright. And my focal length, in this case, since it's concave, the focal length is still going to be positive. What do we do with something that's convex? Uh, what we do with something that's convex, it's basically the same process where we have um, ray 1 goes like this, and then ray 2 comes to the center. Ray 1, it's not going to bounce to the focal point, no. What it's going to do is it's going to bounce away from this focal point. So you see this focal point right here? It's going to bounce directly away from that focal point. Ray 2 is going to do the same thing as it did in all the other cases. This angle here, it's going to bounce off at the same angle. So what I do is I measure how tall my object is. And just kind of, I could just place my object down here. I should have been doing that for the other ones. That would have made it a lot easier. Do my reflected ray. So then, trace this backwards. Here's where my image is going to be. It's a smaller image, so the distance to my image is going to be negative because it's virtual. These rays never cross, which means it's virtual. The height of my image is going to be positive because it's upright. It's the same orientation as my object. And my focal length in this case is going to be negative because it's a convex mirror. All right, let's do our last little example here. Ray 1 comes in. It's, remember, they always stop at the principal plane. They go away from the focus. Ray 2 goes to the middle. Now I'll just bring this down here to figure out exactly how far it reflects, what angle it reflects off. So again, these are diverging rays, so I have to trace them backwards. So trace this reflected ray back. Trace this reflected ray back. Here is my image. People get confused. You never trace your incident ray backwards. You always trace the reflected rays. Always trace the reflected rays backwards. Now, the, the final part, when I start grading you on these, there's just a few pitfalls that a lot of students always fall into. And I wanted to just brush over them with you right now. A few pitfalls that people always fall into is pitfall number one, people don't use straight lines. You have to use a ruler when you're doing these. Number two, people forget to draw in the principal plane. Number three, that I see people stop ray one at the principal plane. So this ray has to go through the mirror, hit the principal plane. Step four, they maybe forget their arrowheads. Like when you draw these, I need arrowheads on the reflected rays, showing that the rays go on indefinitely in that direction. Number five, if you go to the back side of a mirror, you always use dotted lines. So I want you to use dotted lines when going behind a mirror. And then lastly, some people just forget to draw the image. Drawing the image is very important because it shows that you can see in this picture that it's a larger image, it's upright, and it's virtual. So good luck on doing your ray tracings. They're actually pretty fun. They're pretty easy once you get it down. When you come into class, I'm going to have a worksheet where you get to go through this on your, on your own and practice doing this by yourself.